just going to walk through them. We went there. I'm, I'm going to record this part first. Oh, yeah. okay. okay. Yeah. All right. So this has to do with rankings and how to tell if something is legit. So I have pulled up, um, Brennan shared the three um, schools that you'd, you'd visited. Um, and I, I, I want to show you what these mean. Because when you look at this, you're probably like, I don't know what any of this means. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how do I know what's important and what's not important? So we're going to walk through all of those. Um, I will say, just let me give you a big context before we dive in. There's, di there's like three different types of rankings we're going to pay attention to. Um, the first one I think is, is important. These are called international rankings. And because Andre, you are straddling both the US and France slash the rest of Europe. And it sounds like you may want to work in either context, either the US or in Europe or mm -hmm. France. Is that correct? Sure. Then paying attention to international rankings is important. So uh, there are different types of international rankings to pay attention to. First of all, I throw out US News and World Reports. It's garbage, and particularly garbage in an international context. So throw that away. The ones you're going to pay attention to are QS rankings. And there's another one called Times Higher Ed rankings. Time. <laughs> So T H E for short, Times Higher Ed. Wait, could you could you show us real quick? Uh yeah. Uh, let me pull. I pull. Whoa, hold on. I have here's Q S. Q S. Okay. So Q S. I love like I like Q S more than Times Higher Ed, but they're both like great standards. Um, for education yeah. now. They have something called, I wanted just to show you, QS has something where they have uh, business masters and MBA. Now, you're not applying to an MBA, but it should, you should know how universities <coughs> rank in the system. So what these are the top 10 in the world. Yeah. Um, but... Anything ranked honestly in the top, from a business school perspective, in the top 100 is yep. great. Okay. So just know, don't pay attention to the top 10. They'll also be super competitive to get into, right? So you just want to have some type of validation with QS or yep. Times Higher Ed, or there's another one, Financial Times. Yeah. FT Financial Times, or I, I the the fourth one is the Economist. I don't use that one, so I would focus on those top three. It should have one of the three. Doesn't need everything. It should have FT Financial Times, QS, or THE Times Higher Ed. Just one. You don't need everything. Just one. And I'll we'll work, I'll walk you through the your the schools that you looked at. Sure, so that's sure. one type of account. That's the your international rankings. Okay. Okay. Now <clears throat> there's French rankings. Um, those really just matter if you're going to work in France. The French rankings matter less if you are, you know, certainly if you're planning to come to the States, those usually matter less. Although you want to make sure that it is appropriately has the appropriate accreditation, which all of these do. So that part I'm not worried about, but what you're, there are French rankings, but if you're in France, that means something. The third one, which is also super important, particularly if you want a job or if you want to go to like an MBA or a graduate program, um, you are going to want to see, these are called uh, industry, or in this case, business accreditations. And I'll, I'll show you an example here. There are three in business. <clears throat> the first one is here, AACSB. AACSB is a 
business accreditation that is America based. So if you were to look up a business school in the US, you're going to see schools that have AACSB. And can I ask you what accreditations do? Is it just like how they recognize that you're good? Yeah, that's okay. right. And it means something too. Like if later you go to a grad school program, let's say, I don't know, and, and let's say you get your MBA and you're going to want to make sure you have at least one of these three. There are three accreditations. Yep. So AACSB is one. Yeah. The other one is AMBA. This one counts more for MBA programs, but okay. it's just a feather in the cap to say like, oh, well, my school has AMBA. Or Equus. Equus is the European AACSB. So this is the European accreditation for business programs. So in the States, you tend to see only AACSB. Mm -hmm. In Europe, you okay. will see usually schools will have one, if not two. If they have three, that's called triple crown. Yeah, and they always advertise that. Yeah. That's and awesome. I will say that's, I mean, that's a real feather in their cap. That's really great. And it means something for applying to like a, a business school later. But just know in the States, most of our states will only have AACSB if you're applying to business schools in the States. There is another one called EMBA. You... Oh, it's this one, AMBA. But uh, like if you, uh, there's another one like in schema, they don't have AMBA, they have EMBA. Do you know about this one? There is, when we get to, when we get to schema, we'll look at it together. Okay, okay, sure, yeah. Um. So, let me just walk you through each one of these really quick. So, ESCA, here we've got, where did I write it down? Ah, all right. So, they've triple crown, right? So, they have all three of these industry accreditations. Yep. Ooh, that's really great. Um, and so, this just means it's recognized, this diplôme national, that just means it's recognized by France that then you could you know, it's sort of like your licence and then it can, you can continue up to the master's level, right? All of them will have that, but I'm glad they have that on here. That's good. Um, some of these matter, some of these don't. Um, so I'm gonna, ah, okay. Now here, this business school is part of the Grand École certification. That's uh unusual because a lot oftentimes you don't see that at the business school level so that means something in france this is a big deal in france because you know the grand ecosystem is sort of like ivy league it means <laughs> i was like thank you not so much <laughs> well it is as you know there's two way in france there's a grand école and which doesn't have so many spots than the, uh, what we call the normal universities. And right. it's also, but there's 30 of them. So I believe there's only five, as far as I know, uh, in the US. So it might not be so. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not the same, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, not the same. Um, but it means something in France. This doesn't mean as much like here, like if you were to come back to the States and say that, they don't care as much. They're gonna care about industry accreditations and then, um, yeah, that's more important. Like here, this accreditation they threw up here cracks me up. This this means nothing. This mean, these two mean absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, you know, so some of these things they have up here mean nothing. Ah, but they do have Financial Times. Mm -hmm. um in 2015 so, <laughs> yeah 215 right 2015 so i don't know about if they are in the inter oh no it entered financial times master in 2015 yeah. oh right. but yeah 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 so no 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 it's not much that's good yeah so here they've got financial times and they're triple accredited and they also have the column they could 
rank um, designation. So it definitely checks all of those boxes, um, but it doesn't have QS. Uh, is a thing I noticed, but you know, I it definitely meets the international accreditation by having at least one of those, which is the Financial Times, hmm. and then you have the Triple Crown, which is that's gold, that's great. So that's kind of like what you're looking at is like if they're in like they have business accreditations and then international like ranking sites. If they yeah. Have, okay. That's right. That's right. Um, okay, so let me go to, uh, wait, let's see, I can't remember all my tabs here. Ah, Naoma. Okay. Okay, so Naoma starts with their financial times. So, um, they have a good ranking on financial times. They also have the economist, which is fine. I, I don't, I think Financial Times is more important than The Economist, but mm -hmm. they have that. And they've got QS. So here their executive MBA did get um, QS. So it was ranked 61st in the world. So like I said, anything in the top 100 is really, really good. Yeah. Because that's worldwide. And then they have some French rankings too. Like just so you know, like l'étudiant, yeah. like that doesn't mean anything. That I, I sort of feel like, you know, just I, I don't know. It's not that it's bad. It's yeah. just it. Those other ones are going to be more important. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um. Yeah. So of these here, now I'm trying to remember. I did the research. They are also triple accredited. It says it in a different area, but yeah. they also have all three of those industry accreditations around AACSB, Equus, and AMBA. Yeah. So they're triple crown too. So this one is very similar to ESCA, except it also has that QS ranking for the MBA program. Yeah. What, um, um, we we kind of follow Lithuania, <laughs> so um, yeah, you know, I picked up these schools because uh, well, Eska, you know, I totally uh, one a friend of ours uh, recommended it, so that's why, and it was also near um, near the place where we were staying in Paris. Uh, that's why I I ran into it totally by by chance i should say so um the the other one is because neoma because my niece went there and they also were ranked in in étudiant mm -hmm. and and schema is the same story i had uh it's also top 10 in france so i had no idea how to pick up these schools i'm just you know yeah, yeah, and I think it's a great way to start. So don't um, know, Isabel, what you've done is good. Like to, to start with Les Tudion is a great idea. Just make sure you're double checking because Andre sort of straddles France and the United States. Make sure they they are meeting these other standards too. Yeah, yeah. The other thing is uh, I wanted him to show him uh, so one, one school in um, uh, it, it's got several campus in France, but the one I saw was in in, uh, in near Paris. I mean, I would say almost Paris, and um, one was in a in a small city in France, and the other one was in a medium city in France. So I also wanted to show him the different environment uh, that he could uh, run to in France. So that's I think that's brilliant, <laughs> Isabel. It's a really good idea. Cause where do you live now, um, Isabel and Andre? In Seattle. Seattle. Oh, you're in Seattle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, American cities and uh, European, European cities are are very different. Um, yeah. So yeah. So yeah. 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 And it's you know like one of my favorite student cities, Andre. Is uh, Lyon, not Lyon. 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 Yes, yes, we wanted. There's one in Lyon, but 
I, I'm um, going to be shy because it's really a, a, top. a, a top one. I mean, according to l'étudiant. So I was a little bit shy to contact them. And I so the key? Who was it? Uh, yeah, yeah, um, um, uh, I am Lyon. I am Lyon. There's okay. one in Lyon uh, that is very well ranked uh, in the French system. So I was a little bit, uh, I didn't contact them, but maybe I should contact them. But I don't know. I, I, I kind of, I cannot contact 30 schools in France, basically. And, and <laughs> And um, I mean, one of my uh, one of my question is how to pick the the right ones for Andre. So yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think starting with l'étudiant is a very great idea, and because it gives you that French lens. And Andre, if you were to only work in France, I think mm -hmm. that is is a good way to go. If yeah. you are thinking of either coming back or maybe working more broadly in Europe then you should also make look at these other types of rankings too. Um, and I know I have, let's see, so we looked at Naoma, what am I missing? There's a schema. This one yet? We haven't done this one, okay. All right, so schema. Let's see, do they have it? QS. So let's see. They have QS. Now this twenty first worldwide and sixth in the French schools represented. That's really good twenty first. Yeah. So this is a very very good QS ranking. Um. Here they've got Times Higher Ed, Times. and they've got the Financial Times. So they've got like it's all three of those top international rankings that we talked about. They have some of the French rankings in here. Um, but Denise, they, they rank the programs, right? I never understood what they rank. Are they ranking the master? Are they ranking? The right, right, right. I mean, here you can see, right? This is their master's in management. Yeah. Um, master, I mean, but I don't really worry about that so much here with their business school ranking. You just are looking at comprehensively everything. Like how good is the quality? Because even because if they have any of these types of rankings in within their context, that's a good thing. Yeah. Now, I will say they also have, they're also triple accredited industry-wide. And I, even though all these are triple accredited, yeah. I will say it's very unusual to have triple accredited. Triple accredited doesn't happen often. All three of these do. So, you went and visited schools that are triple accredited. So yay you. <laughs> That's great. Because it's, um, like I said, in the US, you tend to see maybe one out of three, maybe two out of three, never three out of three. So yeah. that's really amazing. And even in the European context, you might, usually you see two out of three. Wait, in the, in, <clears throat> in the US, would you ever see a triple accredited? I'm sure they exist. I um, there's like no reason. For they it. don't usually go for the European one, the Equus one, hmm. even though I think they should. But you know they don't. <laughs> but it could happen. Um, but I'm just saying triple accredited means something, and so use that. Like that. But you can also, if they have two, that's also really good too. Just know, like that's a really good one as well. The, the difference also is that there is no, it's, uh, um, you know, the, with the European Union, uh, they have, it's not the same, like in Europe, you, uh, with these business schools, they follow the European Union system, so you have a, a kind of a license, which mm -hmm. is called bachelor. Mm -hmm uh in three years and mm -hmm. masters in five years one in in the us and i don't know about england it's bachelor is four years and no so it depends like some are three years 
And only... Scotland is four years. Mm -hmm. Ireland could be three or four. It's not they point. It depends. Uh, well, if you are in the EU, you have to follow the thing. I don't know about England because England is three. England is three, okay. England is, yeah, but Scotland's four. So oh, Scotland is four, okay. Yeah. Also, um, Brennan asked in the US, do they not care about doing the rankings? Uh, about QS, you mean? I don't know. Or AAC. I was just Which sorry. Ranking? It was I was it was back on the conversation when you were talking about the triple accreditation. And sometimes, you know, the process of getting accredited takes quite a while and is very involved. And so not not having that, I wonder if it's just a matter of not seeking it. Yeah, and I I mean you're also gonna get I'm I have a viewpoint that we tend to be very in the US, like, oh, our accreditation is the best. So I'm yeah. only going to seek the American accreditation, whereas I, I don't think that's true. And I, um, I, I would imagine as particularly as Europe becomes more ascendant with, with all of their education system and more U.S. students are seeking to go to Europe abroad, that that will become more common. But we'll see. I don't know. It is a it is a process. Just know to get those accreditations, it's not easy. Mm. Yeah. Um, all right. So in the time left, I also want to say the other thing you need to be asking. Yes. Has to do around career supports. So you're asking about continuous assessment. Um, you're asking about any type of extra support systems in place for ADHD, and also ask about career supports. How do they connect you with industry? Do they do stage? Do they do an internship and make that an availability for you? Um, you want to know precisely do the, how they help you find a career um, and or a graduate program afterwards. Like you want to have that information. I you want to choose a business school that that really prioritizes um, those industry connections. So it sounds like Andre, you really want to work in Europe. And my did I think is so? That, is that what you're considering? Yeah. So I mean, mo most of them are not going to have career supports for you, the U.S. Yeah. It'll be France and Europe. But ask that question because it is vital to get experience and it is vital to know. And all of them will have fairly good career support centers, but that's where the differentiation as you're applying becomes important. Mm. Uh, so ask those questions so you know, um, you, you know their stats as well as what are those infrastructures and in particular, do they already have relationships with particular industries or particular companies? And, and particularly ask about the stash. Okay. Yeah, it seems that there you, um, I mean, the two of them as a career center. Um, I did not ask about ESCA. Uh, probably but, do. About schema and Yuma as a career center. And, um, what I understood is that uh, they have a lot of internship and they through this internship they want you to find out your your job basically uh, yes. that's the last internship uh, will open uh, job opportunity. the job opportunity and so yeah but that's like with US schools as well okay I think so right yeah, it depends, right? There's different levels of career center support in the US too. But like as regards to like like universities always try to make you sign with a certain company because because of the different in, the internships they offer. Well, we, you talk about Neoma. <laughs> Neoma um so all these guns they call in business were originally regional schools. So uh, Neoma was born in Reims, which is the capital of Champagne. 
and champagne is uh, there's a big uh, uh, is uh, there's big uh, uh, like you have big champagne company that are Tatengi that belongs to Louis Vuitton LVMH, which is a luxury industry. So they have a special relationship with uh, the luxury industry. Yeah, they pretty much try that, to sign you up with so, other companies. So they all have, in, all these schools are a deep uh, connection with the big companies in the regions where they are. Perfect. Yeah, so that's just one of the things to make sure that you understand what those career supports are for each school and which industries um, they are working with. Because, and you, like, you might not know, Andre, at this point, like what industry you want to get into. You know, it might yes. be too early in the process. Um, but uh, just to to see, like for example, like um, like with a Burgundy Business School, they they do a lot of wine um management type of things right so is that an industry you're interested in or are you you know like your mom referenced um luxury management or you know are you looking for multinationals where then you could sort of sort of go back and forth so just ask which companies they've in which industries that they have their their roots yeah, yeah. into so you you can then that's just a differentiator as you're examining them and then, you know, just you're kind of like assuming that like, like you might want to change, you know, just based on the options, except the different internships they offer and the different fields. So, again. yeah. And so that can be a question, right? Can I try multiple industries? Right. Okay. Like if they offer options and whatnot. Yeah, so you're you're not getting into a particular niche because it sounds like you're wanting to have maybe a broader overview. Yes, because you never know. I mean, I'm just a student. Great. All right, so we've got a few more minutes left. What have I left um, untouched for you? Now, I, I still want to make sure you've got the personal statement resources too, but that literally will take one minute. <laughs> so, <laughs> are there any other questions that are outstanding? Um, no. Well, they, they all have different admission. Um, Yeah, so one thing, so maybe Isabel, what you were asking, what I wanted to just be all, all of us clear on is the timeline and the procedure for applying to these places. I'd like to be clear about that. And then I did put in the chat that Andre has spoken to me about interest in environmental or sustainable businesses. And so if there were, I know this is not a list building conversation, but if there were places that come to mind that are particularly strong, in those areas, um, I'd be glad to hear about it. So process and and tips if we have time for that. Yeah, timeline, um, you'll want to probably start applying. Most of them are gonna open up and usually it's in the October range and most of them are gonna close right around Feb 15-ish. Could be a little before, could be a little, a little after. Some do rolling admissions. Um, I usually say get your list built by the end of September, early October. Use, um, I know it's your senior year, so you're going to be busy, yeah. um, but you should use your winter break to really focus on your applications and get them all done if you can. Mm, yeah. So finished by like you'd say what time like you should have like all the application done and whatnot i suggest that if you can i mean like i said some of them might have later will have later ones but i know like when the school year starts it's so hard to manage all those competing priorities so um it's nice to do that for sure um if you can 
uh, so I usually recommend that. Um, let me think. The, in regards to sustainable, I mean, I know it's a it there. You'll see that a little bit more. You might not see a specific focus per se, but I know like some schools will offer like looking at issues of sustainability as it relates to. Um, it could be a per, one course, or it could be a a, a comp, you know they're looking at. I'll, I'll give an example. Like um, they're they're looking at the wine producers are sort of freaking out right now because of the climate, how climate has shifted everything. So looking at what are sustainable things around wine. So that's an example. Um, but um, I also wanna say if Andre, all of this feels super squishy and you're like, oh my God, I'm freaking out with all the things I have to do between now and then. I also, Andre, recommend, I have an awesome, awesome gap year program in France that I love. And it's for people who are like, bam, plus, b deux, c'est un, with their French. Mm. Everything's in French. So you take some coursework, but then they put you with a stage. And these are like real stages. Like these are not like you're getting coffee. Um, they match you. And some of them are in Paris, some are in Strasbourg. They might have some in Bruxelles too, I forget. Um, but just know like, if you need a recommendation for a gap year, I love this gap year program. And it can also just be a way for you to gain more experience and exposure and get, you know, like get a real stage while you're there before you enter, right? So just know that that's an option too. Yeah, so Denise, between all these schools, um, I know we, um, there, should I only contact the first 10 from, from L'Etudion or? Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, um, like Andre is sometimes thinking about uh, he's an ambitious boy, uh, but me personally, I am not going to contact. I don't see why. I, I don't think he would have any chance to get into HEC. Uh, no, I, I think those, I would, I mean, it, like I said, anything in the top 100 is awesome. I don't think you need like an HEC Paris. Like I would have like your schools that you're, you're you know, that you feel confident with and then have like a backup or something, you know, that you can apply to. Um, okay. Well, I think five is the magic number. You do not need 30, like you can have 30, but narrow it down. Yeah, so how would I, my question is, how do I not narrow it? So I think the, the answer, you've got a lot of the information. I miss, do you have a spreadsheet yet? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so you need to add um, accreditations, right? All these that we've talked about. You need to add um, career service support. You need to add disability, uh, any type of um, ADHD accommodations that they are, that they can or can't do for you. Okay. And and also um, con the continuous assessment question, if that's important to you, like. So you know, then you're looking at it comprehensively and, and you can, you know, I, I compare it to, to like buying a house, right? You're never going to find the perfect university with, that meets all your criteria. So you're going to have to sort of pick and choose of what's most important, but pick and choose those top five based okay. on all of these criteria. Okay. I understand. Okay. So... Anything top 100. Yep. Yep. With the... uh, and that's just, you know, those are awesome rankings. Top yeah. 100 on QS, these are amazing, outstanding rankings. Yeah, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not like, like, uh, I'm, I'm like, I'm very practical thinking, so I, I'm not like, hey, I have to go to the top five or anything. Just, I mean, I'm sure all these schools are, they'll give you what you need. So, mm -hmm. so the other question is some of them, uh, the other reason I, I we choose uh, a Neoma and Schema 
it's because they are proposing this what they called um, BBA, which is a four-year program, Bachelor mm -hmm. in Business Administration. Mm -hmm. um, while most a uh, lot of other schools have a bachelor in in three years mm -hmm. and, and they are really trying to sell this bba uh, and i'm a little bit confused um uh, yeah about um, what what is the fourth year what are they doing in that fourth year do you know uh so they have um Okay, uh, so for example, uh, oh yeah, so first year fundamentals, uh, for example, Neoma, uh, first year is fundamentals, uh, second year they have, um, oh, by the way, all these are taught in English. Okay. Uh huh. I'm, yeah. yeah, I'm not surprised. Okay. Uh, so it's, it's really an international uh, program. Um, so, uh, and so, uh, second year is um, uh, uh, okay. Uh, exchange program on a, on a foreign campus. Um, third year is back to France. Um, you, you, uh, it's kind of approfondissement is, uh, you, uh, reinforce your fundamentals. And the fourth year is, uh, professionalization and specialization. Um, so you choose a track. Uh, like, for example, an entrepreneurship track, um, uh, and uh, you can choose uh, uh, another master track or association track. So, yeah, so first year, it's the beginning of more of mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like what they did is they added an international component the second year. Um, and so that's one of the questions I also have for you, Andre. And Isabel, that should be another column on your list. Is is study abroad important to you? Going to another, like you're already in France, but then doing another country um, with study abroad, is that important to you? Either in Europe or outside of Europe? I would say yes, because it's part of the international um, business program. Just okay, like, right. Uh, so a lot of the international business ones will have that. So create a column and make sure that that's you understand. Yes, but what are the con what is the context of that? Um, like for example, like some international programs have like they'll they'll do like a trip maybe that's a faculty led trip instead of you going to a campus, and they're both good options. Just know like. Oh, what are, what does that look like? What does that international exposure and experience look like? Um, so that's just another column to look at, so you can see. Oh, I, I'm going in wide, eyes wide open. But if that's important to you, make sure that that's part of it. Sometimes in the three year ones, you don't see that. Uh, yes. It depends. Yes, I think they had it one more year for uh, an exchange program. I have to see on ESCA, for example, ESCA doesn't have a, a BBA, they just have a three-year, um, but they also, they also claim it's international, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so just find out what does that mean? Like, are you, yeah. what are you doing um, to make it international? So they just have one semester uh, instead of one year um, um, outside of campus outside of France and maybe they don't have the um, international outlook the specialization that they add at the end in the in the in the in the fourth year um, yeah so basically both schema and, and Neoma has this four-year program that is really for um, uh, international I mean they had it one year I guess they want to follow the American 
Could uh, be. I mean, usually what I see in Europe, if they have a four year, like in the US, that first year is gen ed, right? We um, take these general courses that then that if you decide to transfer to another institution, you can possibly do that. Um, you don't usually see gen ed. The foundation courses are foundational business courses. These aren't like liberal arts foundation courses. So that's that, that's usually what you see. So that fourth year tends to either be in Europe. Um, it will either be a stage or study abroad uh, type of international experience or both. Um, so it's usually different than the US. But I, I like um, definitely having study. For me, I like study abroad and I like more experience built into the program. But it's not necessary. Just know it's like you, you a license is still considered a bachelor's degree. Okay. Full stop. Yeah. You don't need to have that fourth year. That's just for more experience or more exposure, usually. Yeah. So yeah, they're trying to sell, I think in so so in this some of the BBA, they're trying to sell you a double degree. You would get a double degree. I don't really care about you don't care. Yeah. Okay. Well. Yeah, I, I don't know. As long as they have triple accreditation, it would, it's not even relevant. Like, yeah, and one thing, Andre, I will also suggest you do is make sure you look whichever programs you're looking at. I go in and look at the courses, and look at like, oh wow, and like not only look at the titles if they have the syllabi. Look at the syllabi. Does your heart sing? Or is your heart like, eh, okay. Yeah. So you want to choose a program that your heart feels connected to. Like you're excited about like, yeah. oh, I can't wait to study this. This yeah. is super interesting. Yeah. Most of them will be very similar in their format, but every once in a while, like you might see a, it sounds like sustainability is your thing. Is there a sustainability option? Like look at that, it might just be a course, but look oh, at yeah. that level oh. of detail. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, like, in terms of like, the reason I say sustainability um, is just because that's just where, that's just what's ahead of us, just climate change right. thing. So uh, am I, am I right to assume that all universities will be looking at sustainable business because it's just, this is what's ahead? No. No, no. I mean, I think you're right. But you will see, what you're going to see at the B that the that, that the license level is more general general business right. with some specialization near the near the end. Um, and there might be a course with sustainability. Now, when you start to see an a, a, go a deeper dive into that, is is at the master's level. So. Another way to look at this is to see, do they have a master's in sustainable business or of any focus like in that level? Usually you're not going to see that at the bachelor's level. Yeah. You right. might just see a course or two. You would hope that everybody would be thinking this way, but uh, sadly yeah. it is not the case. So, hmm. so just look at the curriculum. That's all you have to do. Look at the curriculum and see like, oh, okay. The, they're aligning their values are aligning with my values yeah because like i just read the schema thing and you know like they it's obviously like advertising like i just read whatever values they had just like the front page mm -hmm. and they say they want to they want to keep up with like the modern world or something but I, i'm not sure if that means that they'll be having sustainable courses or whatnot that's why you have to they yeah. but they have the courses listed and yeah, you have. are allowed to ask for syllabi too but yeah. ask that question directly like do you have sustainable courses on sus sustainable business practices or does that get covered in any particular course it might not be called that course but there might be a course where they go over some of that so i mean this is your opportunity to ask those questions yeah, only to ask questions yeah to narrow that down Thank you. Okay. Well, um, it's been your hour. Um, do you want to point us to 
to the resources about the personal statement? Yeah, and... what, I'll, what I'll do, Brennan, is I'll just send it to you okay. and then you can okay. share it. But what it is, yeah. is I have a video on it. I have an article and a worksheet on it. And if you just follow the steps, you'll get there. Most that. people, mm -hmm. what they do is they, because it's pretty clear cut. If you follow these steps, you'll you'll come up with a good personal statement. They're looking to see why are you a good fit for this program? Sure. Right, so that's the, the primary question. And I give you the, the format, then you can reach out to me later and do like an hourly with me just to review it with you if you need it and you might not need it. Mm -hmm. But you've got the resources and you can roll with it and then use me later if you need it. Um, Wait, did you say like one of the questions to be asked is why am I a good fit for the program? Usually that's what the personal statement is asking. Oh, wait, okay. It's what you're going to need to write about so, in, your, in your essay. For that okay. Well, most of these schools are really, uh, all of them, I mean, uh, as far as I can see, they are, they, the main focus is an interview. Yeah, yeah. So you will have you won't have to write it, but you will usually there's a personal it. statement. Right. Not all of them have it, but most of them you will see that. So it's like yeah, because I just we just asked for schema and neoma. They don't require any sort of personal statement. It was straight up CV interview. That's all you have. To oh, do. okay. Well, great. Then you then no. don't. But some will. Some I just will. know like you have this resource if you need it. If you don't right. need it, great. Don't worry about it. But okay. it is, it's very common in Europe to have that. And okay. you know, I'm doing the per I'm doing the common app right now. So will I be able to transfer that? Or is that no, she's saying it's very statement? different? No, it's not. Your essays in the States are gonna look so different than if you write an essay in Europe. And they're not most all these schools are not. I don't want to say 100%, but you're not going to see a lot of Common App. They're not using the Common App, so you'll have to apply directly through yeah. them. So it's just a, it's an extra step, but you'll be able to recycle materials within the context of France. Okay, well, bit. are they going to ask a different question, or what? What is it going to be looking like? I'll what send you the I'll send you the personal statement. You'll yeah. need to gather on your once you've narrowed down, gather the. Um, the the admissions criteria most of them um will have a many of them will have a personal statement some will you know obviously you need your u.s diploma um and inter interviews common testing it i don't see that so often at the, the, the for this so um yeah there would be no reason to do so um yeah me on that Oh, because they have their own testing. Every, they have their every, own school, test. every school has their own admission process. It is yeah, not. yeah. Every school has their own admission. Wait. So make sure you're looking precisely <laughs> at those admissions criteria. Yeah. And like I said, if it has a personal statement, I'll just give that to you for free. You will. It's very different than a U.S. essay, so you won't be able to recycle your Common App stuff there. It won't work. Okay. Um. For the personal statement, well. Is it a general thing for Europe or is it like? No, they're going to ask you a specific question, but there tends to be a format you're going to follow. Oh, personal. I'm OK. Maybe it's not as long as a U.S. essay, is it? No, they're just asking a different question. Oh, like different. usually U.S. the U.S. system, you've got like there might be multiple essays you're writing. Right. And here it's one. But it's almost like you're applying for a job versus, you know, it's like. They don't care that you broke your arm when you were four years old. They care that, are you a good fit for the program? And have you researched the program enough to know what you're getting into? And you're able to demonstrate that you, what you're bringing will, will be a great fit for this program. It's like looking for a job, basically. Yeah. And then in, in what Andre's working on for his personal statement for the Common App, there might be parts that will be able to carry forward because he's talking mm -hmm. about what he's done, how he's spent his time and how it brings him to where he is now. So it's possible that there'll be parts, but yeah. it would be, would yeah. be a, a different format. And so Denise is gonna send us that information so that um, we can 
follow that if it's needed. It sounds like for two out of the three schools currently on the table, it might not be needed. So, um, okay. Um, so let's I, see. Sorry, I have one more question. Andre, are you only interested in France or is there other country in Europe you might consider just for? No, as of now, I'm not thinking any other countries. Okay. All right. Just wanted um, to check. So, but if they, if Denise, if they wanted to have a consult specifically about um, schools or list building in France, that would be another follow up meeting that could be scheduled. Yeah, yeah, in France, or if later you decide to look more broadly to Europe, I can. We can also. You, you also know the other part of Europe. Uh, yeah. Europe. So the comp the popular countries to look at would be Netherlands, and although yeah. might be hard without an ID. Um, the other one is Ireland. Ireland has great programs and you can do it with US, um, US diploma. Okay, I need to go so I could transfer the host to someone else. Um, well, actually we can... I have to go too, but okay. I, I, I have a meeting. So after my meeting, I'll send that to you, Brennan, and then okay. you'll have access to the personal it. statement. Um, great. Information. Would it would it also be possible to kind of compare and contrast like U.S. versus European universities? Is there any is there a reason to do that? Just for the just to know, um, they have to offer in terms of. A, I mean, Brent, maybe Brennan and I could do that together with you. It was a separate meeting. Um, yeah, separate. Yeah, separate yeah. Of course, of course. yeah, because I have a big question about that. When in the US you have out of state is forty thousand dollars, and these schools no. they are between ten thousand, around ten thousand euro, and totally don't yeah, know yeah, yeah. what's happening here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Oh, it's yeah. it's crazy. Like it. I, that's why I have my business for that very reason. You just nailed why I have my business. <laughs> Because it's crazy. It makes no sense to me. So anyhow, but I'm happy to do that. Uh, but do I'll send you that resource. It'll be later today. And I'm happy to answer other questions too. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Talk to you guys later. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.